So what we'll be doing with this asset is uh, what's called exploding. So we will be we're exploding this model, creating individual sections and exporting out a high poly version, a low poly version and a cage. Um, so those three items for each major component of the asset will be baked using XNormal to create our normal maps and uh, that'll happen separately for each, each piece. It's very important to follow a, an exploded workflow um, where you're baking individual pieces to get nice clean bakes on those pieces instead of trying to do it all at once because you'll get artifacts and we'll actually see that when we try to do um, some components. At the end of the process, we simply bring those normal maps into Photoshop and compile them into a single normal map. Okay, so now we're going to make the high poly model. If we smooth this model, you can see that it's distorting. We need a high poly model with a lot of detail, nice smooth edges, so, so that we can use that to bake our normal map. Uh, I'm going to start with this dumpster base and just focus on a single piece. Um, the, th the first thing we need to do is make sure that it can be smoothed properly. So all I'm doing is using the multi-cut tool and holding down control to insert edge loops in order to add control loops. So a control loop is just uh, an edge loop that flows like I'm adding here along the side of where we want our hard edge surfaces. So when we hit three on uh, the keyboard in Maya, we get our smooth preview and you'll see as I work I'm, at the moment, I'm frequently hitting three on the keyboard just to preview my model and make sure that it's getting the correct smooth shapes and I'm, I'm retaining the square format. It's a little bit distorted on the other side of the model at the moment. Uh, I'm not worried about the other side. I'm just going to do one side and then duplicate that over. So it doesn't matter too much about the geometry uh, and about the topology in, at this stage for this high poly model. Um, this is just going to be used inside of XNormal. You could use the Maya transfer maps, it certainly works, but typically I only use it for pretty simple things like projecting onto a plane. XNormal has some significant advantages. It's, it's built from the ground up for baking textures, which means it's fast, it's significantly faster. Um, it typically gives you better results. So in the front view there, I'm just uh, cutting, holding down shift with the multi-cut tool and clicking outside uh, the model and dragging up to cut and getting rid of half. I want to create sort of a um, an undertuck, like an overhang sort of lip for this uh, lip section. So I've just inserted a couple of edge loops with the multi-cut tool. Now I'm extruding those up and if I jump to the side view, I can drag those straight up and that gives me a nice clean sort of lip there. And basically anywhere you need to maintain a hard edge when it's smoothed, you need to insert edge loops, control loops. The most easy way usually is to insert a whole new edge loop. Although sometimes a bevel is a better approach, uh, which I'll do a little bit later. But most of the time I usually just go with a multi-cut tool and insert an edge loop. So doing the lip here, just anywhere we need to retain the hard edges when we smooth. The poly count of this model doesn't matter whatsoever. Uh, the unwrap of this model doesn't matter. This just gets baked into our normal map. All we're doing is using this to create a, a source for our normals. So I'm just cleaning up the, um, the verts there in the middle after having duplicated it. Uh, the same that we've done a few times before in the previous videos. Duplicate it over, merge your verts, delete the edge, uh, edge vertex edge loop and so this model is currently smooth or smooth preview there's a couple of areas that I, I want to improve and since the, this is the high poly model we want to add a bit of extra detail and so I'm adding uh, edge loops through the center and because I'm going to create a bit of a extrusion inwards 
for a bit of extra detail. So this front loop that I've connected, just making sure I've got all of those verts and in the front view, I scale those up, they're all in line now. I had some weird issues inserting edge loop, it just didn't want to smoothly uh, loop around. So all I've done really is insert a couple of edge loops to create faces. Now by jumping to either side and double clicking, I can select that face, the ring of faces all the way around. With those all selected, I'm using Edit Mesh Extrude. Sometimes I find the Edit Mesh Extrude tool works a little bit better than the uh, Modeling Toolkit Extrude tool. Just make sure you set your settings correctly. So mine was set to six divisions automatically, but uh, I just reset that. Now to start with these weird edges um, that have come out in the extrusion, all I'm doing is merging these verts into a single vert. but I will come back shortly and rebuild that to make sure that they flow smoothly and cleanly. Once again, I've realized I need to make adjustments uh, to one side of the model. And instead of having to do it four times, it's easier just to delete half, duplicate it, duplicate it over when I'm finished. So here I am rebuilding it. Um, to start with, I thought I'd try just connecting those outside verts only. So I've got three loops through the center as opposed to the uh, four loops that I've got on the top and bottom. So it definitely cleans it up, but I'll point out that I will notice a little bit later that uh, that gives me a, an issue, a little bit of pinching in my normal map once I've baked it. So I'll come back fairly soon and uh, rebuild that to make sure the center piece aligns and matches the uh, geometry of the, the top and bottom piece. That'll make more sense in a moment. So I'll speed this up. This is identical to what I just did on the other side. I've selected the inside faces there and I'm just scaling them in. You always want anything that's being baked from a normal map to uh, not be perfectly aligned from a orthographic viewpoint. There needs to be a little bit of variation so that when we create our normal map, uh, we're seeing the sense of depth. If that was perfectly in line from the side view from or front view that becomes uh, the depth becomes invisible so we need to force it to, to have a little bit of depth so you always just scale that in a little bit just a couple more issues here on this uh, these corners that I've noticed It's very quick and easy to rebuild geometry just using that multi-cut tool. So you shouldn't really be hesitant to um, have to just rebuild things if you ever have a problem. And when you delete edges, always use the delete edge vertex tool. Otherwise, if you just hit the delete key, you risk le leaving behind uh, verts. Just got a problem here with this uh, edge loop that didn't complete, so I'll use the multi-cut tool to connect that all the way through. I noticed when I smooth it, I got some strange pinching, and it's because of these verts that have been left over. A quick bit of welding fixes that. It's important to pay attention to those sorts of problems uh, because otherwise uh, you'll end up with artifacts in your normal map. Just adding a few more control loops to make sure I'm retaining hard edges. Okay, so here I've decided to rebuild this to make it match. The beveled corner needs to match. So I'm using the slide edge tool 
to just drag those edges out along the existing face and I'm going to bevel that corner edge. This has gone green. It's just a strange bug with the modeling toolkit. Sometimes that happens. Uh, just reapply your Lambert shader, not a problem. Using the target world now to clean up the results of that bevel and we're done. Uh, I'll just grab the edges there and um, use the slide edge tool to drag them out a little bit more so that the uh, corner facing bevel on the side there is more similar. And we can see when now when we smooth it, it all looks very clean. It's much better than it was. So I'll just speed up that process and repeat on the other side. Here I've duplicated the model, the other half of the model over, combined it. I'm saving again, as you can see, I've got quite a few saves. It's very important to keep saving duplicates. And now I've smoothed the model. So basically that's not smooth preview anymore. I've gone to mesh smooth and we've locked that in as a high poly model. Deleting history, freezing transformations, making sure the center, the pivot point is centered. And now I'm exporting the selection as an OBJ. I'm calling this space high poly 01. I've run triangulation. So I've got the high poly model uh, ready to use in X normal. Now we need to set up the low poly model and the cage. Now the low poly model, we need to consider our hard edges and soft edges. Now if I, I can demonstrate this by turning on the display soft edges and display hard edges. So the purple lines are where all my hard edges are. What we need ultimately is wherever I have um, texture border edges, so UV, UV seams, those seams, they all need to also be hard edges in the model. So the normals on the model need to have hard edges where the seams are. But everything else needs to be soft edge. So technically what we're doing is selecting the whole model and converting all of the edges to soft edges. And then we're going through and selecting all of the seams, the UV seams, and converting all of those normals to hardened edges. But that could be a little tricky and there is a faster way to do that. So if you open up your command line and your script editor, I've provided a script that will do this for you automatically with one click and save a lot of time. So basically you just need to open that script. Before I do this, I need to open my shelf. So we're going to put this on the shelf. Now drag select your script, middle click drag it onto the shelf and it creates a button. If I turn on the soft edges, the entire model is soft edges. There are currently no hard edges anywhere on the model. Now with the model selected and I run the script, if I turn on the hard edges, we can see these purple edges are in the exact same position as where my UV seams are. So I also turn on my texture seams and we can see the hard edges and the texture seams align. And we can see by the dotted lines that the uh, soft edges, everything else is a soft edge. This is um, crucial for creating any sort of quality texture bake that involves hard edges. So generally you're talking about things with right angles is considered a hard edge. Any, any sort of sharp hard edge, you won't get a clean texture bake. Now, we also need to create a cage. So our own custom cage to be used in next normal uh, is a very important process uh, to get a clean texture bake. So I'm just creating a new Lambert shader with some transparency and you can see I've duplicated the model there. So I've got two copies of it. And to one of those, I've applied this transparent shader. See, two shaders, two models. Now with one of these, if I select all of the vertices with my move tool and go into the move settings and click on normal and click on the little N, that will scale those out in the normal direction. And so what I need to do is make sure that this transparent cage is slightly larger than the underlying cage. Now you will need to make a few adjustments. 
So for example, on these inside sections, um, everything needs to be read, needs to be covering over that inside model. It's important, of course, that you finish your low poly model before you create your cage because it, the cage needs to be identical to the low poly model. If there are any differences in your, from your cage and your low poly model, um, X normal won't work correctly. So it needs to have the exact same number of vertices. Uh, when I say no differences, you can change the positioning of faces. Uh, which is what we do, obviously, we're, we're making this larger so that it encompasses the entire low poly model. Uh, but you can't have changed geometry with new vertices anywhere in the model. And it's very important that you also um, have that low poly model finished with the hard edge and soft edge tool using that uh, script that I gave you. Uh, so that the, the low poly model has the same normal map, uh, normal edge detail. Okay, so I'm just exporting the cage and I'm calling that, I'm calling the everything here base, as in the base component of the model. So I've called that base cage. I'm calling this one base LP. You need to be able to identify quickly the file name. So here in XNormal, I'll click on the high definition meshes, right click add mesh and select the high poly. Same with the low poly, click on the low definition meshes, right click add meshes, low poly, and then also click on the cage, uh, right click browse for base cage and add the cage. Uh, no need to adjust the other settings. Okay, just make your normal map selected. I've set that to fairly high quality, so 2K texture. And I'm creating an ambient occlusion render as well. Uh, for the rest of the videos, I'll only demonstrate the normal map. Now here I've got a blank scene in Maya and I've imported the low poly base. I just want to check the result of this normal map uh, inside of Maya. So created two files and a Lambert. One file I'm connecting the um, normal with the idea that I would connect the other file to the ambient occlusion, but I'll just worry about the normal. Make sure you set your normal to tangent space normals uh, into the bump map. Now here I've got two models to, to create uh, an example of the right, right way and the wrong way. So on the left is the correct way uh, that worked that I demonstrated in the video. Um, on the right though, you can see artifacts. Now this is a result of not running the script that I gave you. Um, basically not having the edges set up with hard and soft edges. Also the cage wasn't correctly set up uh, on the right. So we're getting artifacts uh, on the inside. So a simple difference of making your texture water edges hard and everything else smooth edges makes a big difference. And you can see we've got, we've got quite a clean bake on the left there. Okay, so we'll move on to the lid. So I've actually created the lid and I've created, as you can see here, a cage and I've run the script on the low poly version. And I've exported out the low poly version of the of the model and the cage. Uh, so we'll just worry about how I created the high poly version. So instead of using the insert edge loop from the multi-cut tool, I'm selecting everything. And now just making sure I've got everything I need selected. So all the corners that need to be hard edge. And now using bevel. You can click and drag with that bevel tool to increase or decrease the amount of bevel. It's gone green. I'm not going to worry about throwing on the, a new Lambert shader. Uh, it, that doesn't matter. Um, I'm using the multi-cut tool from the an orthographic side or, or back to drag uh, cut through an edge loop to force that edge to be hard. But looking around, that model's fairly clean. So I've exported that out. I'm uh, calling it lid HP for high poly. So I'm bringing, bringing in the high poly model, the low poly model, and the cage into XNormal. The exact same process I did for the other asset. And here's the bake. For the most part, this is looking very clean. It's worked quite well, but there is one issue. Uh, for some reason, this front right side 
um, the front face there has a difference to the faces on the other side. And just checking the normals, uh, we can see it's this one on the right. And the easiest way to fix this is just to jump into Photoshop and do so. Just to copy manually, uh, clean it up. So I'm just going to use the uh, polygonal select tool to roughly select um, a face here that's worked. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, drag it over and position it so that it aligns correctly. Now I've hit E for the eraser tool. Which has got the opacity down to 20%, so I've just turned that up a little bit. Just help that sort of clean in, uh, match the, the background a little bit. Save that out and reapply the normal map that I just made and you can see now um, the front section of that model is all identical and it matches correctly. So it's important to clean up your normal maps. Now one more thing I'd like to do is create a um, sort of handle, an, an indent that um, a person would stick their hand in to, to lift the lid. So I'm just going to make it the basic shape and bake that onto a plane and then just um, I compile that in Photoshop. So all I'm doing, I sped this right up, I'm just making uh, the shape out of a cube. Just adding some edge loops to make sure that that um, retains a hard edge shape when we smooth it. So you can see the process of uh, creating your high poly models for smoothing. It's just a matter of hitting smooth, making sure it's got the shape you want. If it doesn't, add some more detail to uh, retain those hard edges. I'm just using the multi-cut tool to clean that up. I need these loops, edge loops, to travel all the way around the model. Um, basically forcing it to maintain quads. Uh, you generally want to avoid triangles for something that's going to be smooth and subdivided. If you have triangles, it'll pinch. If you have endons, it'll certainly pinch and give you problems. So I'm just merging any leftover verts. Um, it's a messy bit of geometry, but it gives me the shape I need. That's good enough. So I've smoothed the model. Now I've gone into my render settings, transfer maps. And the target mesh is the plane. If I just select envelope, the plane disappears. So we select both, I can see the mesh and the plane. You just need to make sure that that red uh, transparent envelope is in front of the object. Because it's a 2D plane, um, it's going to be two-dimensional bake. So I'm baking a normal map, just telling it where I want to save and what file name. I'm calling this handle, NRM for normal. I'm saving it as a PSD. Um, 1024 but 1024 is fine and I'll click bake and there's the result of the bake. So that's just a two-dimensional plane. Now we open that in Photoshop and I'm just going to compile this onto my uh, normal, other normal map. So copy that handle selection. Before I know where to paste it I need to see um, where the UVs are. If I select that front section I can see it's uh, down in this lower corner. I'm actually going to export out this UV. So you, in my UV texture editor, go to Polygons, UV Snapshot. Tell it where you want to save. I usually call it something with UV, uh, lid UV or lid wires, something like that. Uh, form tool settings is fine, the, the Maya format. Um, and now I'll bring in the UVs. I'll just copy those and paste them over the, the normal map. And I'll just go into Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation and uh, turn up the saturation so I can actually see the wires. So we'll copy the handle, jump back to the original normal map, and Control V to paste. And now Control T to transform. And I'll hold down Shift and click in that corner to scale it down. Just want to make sure it fits inside the front of the lid there. So it's going to be roughly that size, but it's a little bit small. So I'm just going to grab the end with the marquee select tool and drag it over. Hold down shift to snap that uh, in the horizontal. And now I'm selecting the sections and hitting control C to copy and then control V or shift control V to paste in place. And then dragging those over where I want them. 
we can see we've got a couple of different uh, layers. Let's put each, each copy onto a new layer. I'm just going to select the matching color with the eye, the eye drop selector. So I hit the I key on the keyboard and select that color. And now, now I'm hitting B for brush and I'm just painting in over the top of all the previous layers that uh, matching base color to try to get the blending, the objects blending a little bit better. I've actually got the pencil tool selected. Uh, it doesn't really matter which, which brush you're using, just as long as those, um, that, that normal color matches all the way along and see how it looks in 3D. It's a little bit uh, misaligned. It's a bit too far to the left. So in Photoshop, I'm bringing it back to the right. Now we'll see here, this is a good demonstration of why it's important to have your normal shells aligned. It's actually upside down. So by bringing it to the right, it's appeared more on the left. So I need to push it to the left a bit. And now that aligns with um, more or less where I'm wanting it to be. Maybe just move it a touch more. So that, that looks reasonable. Just need to go in and clean it up a little bit. We've got, um, I'm just selecting I to grab the base color. Um, drag selecting with the marquee select. Just a, a section along here that's working and I'm control pasting, control V pasting to make sure that aligns. And I'm using the eraser tool to just get rid of a little bit of uh, the pixelation on the side there that's um, just to help it blend a little bit better into the background. And so I click on the shader in Maya to update the normal map and we can see that that's looking quite clean and um, works really well. So I'll just snap the pivot to the middle, delete its history, duplicate it over, or scale it in X, negative one, and merge the components. And there's the bin lids completed. This back bar, the bar itself really doesn't need any normal high poly baking, um, but the little end pieces do. So the bar itself is just a cylinder. We're not going to get any extra detail by baking um, a higher poly cylinder onto it. Uh, the, the most detail we can get out of it is by simply setting all of the edges on the cylinder itself to soften edges. Um, but I am actually baking it. Um, so I'm creating the cage. And of course, I've run my script to make sure the texture seams are all hard edge and everything else is a soft edge. So I'm exporting out the cage, calling it back bar cage and back bar LP for low poly. Now for the high poly, we just need to smooth the pieces at the end. So a couple of edge loops should quickly give us the shape we need when we smooth it. So we'll zoom in on this piece. Currently when we smooth it, it becomes a curve. So we need to keep, we need to maintain the, the square bend. Don't worry too much if the geometry doesn't match and it's not super clean geometry, as long as it's the high poly smooths nicely. Now a couple of those edge loops that I've inserted have gone all the way through the bar, which is giving us a hard edge on the cylinder of the main bar. So we just need to, to delete those and just terminate those edge loops. In this case, into triangles will be fine. We won't notice any pinching in that back corner. It won't be visible. And when we smooth it, that's, um, that's fine, that's looking reasonable. So I'll run mesh smooth on the model and freeze, delete its history, freeze its transformations and exports that as back bar HP. So load up the high poly, 
the low poly and the cage inside of XNormal. Rename the file, of course, to backbar and click on bake. Now we look at the result here applied in Maya and we're seeing a little bit of pixelation. If we zoom back a bit, it's not too bad. It actually looks reasonable, but when we zoom up close, it definitely has an issue. The reason for that is if we take a look in the UV texture editor, these UV shells are tiny. They're a very small portion of the overall model and probably only measure a few pixels across. And so that results of a normal map being a little bit pixelated because it's only handling a few pixels. But we can live with that. At the distance we're looking, it's not a problem. If it's noticeable, uh, we need to do something about it. Okay, so the front bar. So same deal, I am running my script on the low poly to harden any texture seams and soften all the other edges. I'm duplicating the model, using the move tool options, setting it to normals to create my cage, and then dragging that out, and then exporting out, calling it front bar cage and front bar LP, low poly. So that's nice and quick, very easy. Now the high poly, just using the multi-cut tools insert edge loop to qu quickly create some uh, control loops. What I'm doing is uh, going around the auto select the whole loop isn't working. So I'm just selecting manually that loop and dragging that out uh, to give me a control loop around the outside. A control edge loop. Do the same on the other side. So just dragging that out to get a nice bit of smoothing for that loop. Um, so I don't need to do this twice. I'm just going to delete half the model and duplicate it over when I'm done. Add a few more edge loops to help keep the model with hard edges. And do the same for this um, cylindrical hole down here uh, that I did with the last one. So once I've inserted a couple of edge loops, I'm manually selecting the outside edge loop, scaling that out. And looking at that smoothed, it's all fairly clean. It looks like it's worked pretty well. I'm just inserting an edge loop at the end of that cylinder, just in case that distorts a little bit. Got a bit of leftover geometry there I'll get rid of. Okay, just duplicating this bit, this side over, and uh, reverse scaling it. Making sure it's aligned correctly with the rest of, of the model.
combining all of those elements. I've smoothed, exported the high poly, brought it all into XNormal here, and this is the result of the XNormal bake. Now the piece on the right looks fine. No issues visible there. However, this left side, uh, we're seeing some artifacts. Easiest way to clean that up is in Photoshop. I just want to check which uh, faces I need to be looking at. So we can see it's uh, these artifacts here. This is most likely a result of trying to bake too many components at once. Uh, you, you essentially end up with shadows on different elements. Because it's such a simple model, fortunately, we can clean this up quite easily in Photoshop. Just um, hit I for your eyedropper tool and select the background normal color and then paint over it on a new layer. So when we save that and update our Maya scene, we can see that parts of that are fixed up. Uh, there's a couple of bits still with some issues. So I'm just checking which faces they are in my UV editor, jumping back to Photoshop to find those faces. And we can see it's this area here. And again, we'll just paint over that. There's really no normal information in there. It's only the outside edge, so just clean it up, um, paint over completely to get rid of any issues. And update it again in, in Maya, and we can see that looks good. These bars on the side, these little curling bar, there's no point baking those. I'm not going to worry about it. There's no extra detail we could put on those from a normal bake. Now the wheels, once again, I'm deleting all the wheels except for one. We'll just do a single bake and I'll demonstrate this time in next normal. I'll still explode this asset. We will export each of those individually. However, X normal lets you do multiple bakes at once. So I'll just bring all of those into, um, into X normal as separate objects. Okay, so I've selected the whole model and run the script to get hard edges on all the texture seams and soft edges everywhere else. And I'm exporting, just making a new folder just for the wheel components, just to help it be easier to keep track of. So I'm exporting that, uh, calling it just a cube, low poly, applying my transparent shader, duplicating the model. So exporting the cage, the high poly, we'll just add a few uh, subdivision, so grab the modeling toolkit and bevel of the entire model. As long as we have uh, a little bit of beveling, of, of a little bit of softness to the hard edges, we end up with a nice looking model. I'm just going to speed this section up. It's just more of the same. For each component of the wheel section, I'm going to create a cage, create the low poly by running the script on it for the hard and soft edges, export those out separately and create a high poly simply by adding a few control loops in order to smooth it. Okay, so X normal, nothing special here. Basically, now that we've created a separate low poly, high poly and cage for each section, I'm simply going into the high definition models to add and selecting all of my high polys in one go, going into the low poly, selecting all of those low polys in one go, and on each one in the low poly options, I'm going right clicking and browsing for the cage and making sure I, of course, select the correct cage. Now that I've loaded them all, I go into my baking options and I'm just calling this wheel 01. And I'm creating a normal map and an ambient occlusion map. And that will just, once I click generate maps, that automatically renders a single texture with all of those UVs combined into the one texture for us which actually saves a little bit of uh, conversion inside of Photoshop. We do get a few minor artifacts, uh, which is a result of baking those different elements in the one go. So generally, anytime you try to bake anything too complex, uh, too many elements at once, you will get some sort of artifacts. It's just a matter of cleaning them up. Here I'm using the smudge tool, just uh, smudging those colors to nice and quickly clean up. Back in Maya, I just want to apply the um, wheels PSD file that I saved out of Photoshop. 
checking that it's all good and duplicating over the um, other strut. So now I'm duplicating each wheel, adding a little variation with some rotation in them and just positioning in the top view where they should be. So in Maya, uh, we can see that that's pretty much a finished model that's completely normal mapped. For these sidebars, I'm not going to do anything for the normals. Um, I won't be able to get any extra detail, so there's no point. I'm just uh, combining all of these elements into a single scene, exporting this as an OBJ, which we need for Quixel. Now, I've included the chain in this export, uh, giving us a good overview of the whole model, but just be aware that um, we're texturing the chain separately. Okay, so now in Photoshop, I've got each of my normal maps opened and I've brought in the UV wires and I'm just adjusting the uh, hue saturation so that I can see the wireframe a little easier. Now it's just a matter of uh, starting on one normal map and using your marquee select tool to drag select a, a series of shells. Control C to copy, jumping back to what we're calling our main normal map and Control V to paste. And now I'm just going around the model with the lasso select tool to select just the shell I want and then holding down shift control I to inverse the selection and then hitting delete which just deletes everything except that shell. And so I'm now, now I'm repeating for the next shell from the uh, other section of the wheel normal map and just using the lasso tool going through selecting just that series of shells Shift Control I inverse the selection, hit delete. And so all we have left is just the shell that we want. And so this way it's not overlapping any other shell. And so we can go through all of our normal maps that we've, we've baked out of X normal, just selecting the bits we want, bring, bringing them all into this one texture, uh, which will become our, our finished normal map. So just the marquee select tool there. Shift Control I the inverse, deleting the bit we don't want. And that's the wheel section done. So now we'll go to the, uh, this looks like the front bar. With the marquee select tool, if I hold down uh, shift, that will add to my selection. And if I hold down alt, that will subtract from my selection. If I hold down those keys and drag. So I've just done that uh, to unselect that section there and deleted what I don't want. Now I'll just speed this up. This is just uh, repeating for every single shell. So you can see the process. Just making sure you get every single shell uh, from the normal maps that you've baked. Copying individually each section, bringing them into your main normal map and pasting in place. So to paste in place, shift control V and just make sure that uh, the shells that you paste aren't overlapping any other shells that you'll need, which you can check by your UVs um, overlaid over the top of everything. So spend a few minutes doing that. Uh, we'll just speed through this. Okay, so this is the finished normal map. I'm just saving that out. Now that I've combined all of them into a single texture, I'm saving that out as dumpster NRM for normal. I'll just turn off the wireframe so we can see the whole lot. So I'm flattening the image, layer flatten image. So I've only got a single layer. I'm just creating a folder in my source images uh, in my project folder called texturing. And this is where I'm going to work for all of the texturing processes. 
Now I'm saving that this out as a target. Um, I went 32 bit. I really don't need that. Uh, 32 bit just means the alpha channel is included. I don't need that extra channel, but I did that anyway. And finally, all I want to do is assemble this inside of Quicksort to take a look of it, look at it inside a real time renderer. So hitting D for ddo, uh, click on the mesh button, navigate to your dumpster.obj file that you've exported at the end of the normal mapping process. So that's the mesh. Click on the normal map that you've just created and bring that in. At the end, just click on the three, the three do, and that brings up our 3D viewer in Quixel. And so we're looking at it now, the finished single asset as one object with a single normal map applied to the whole model. We can see the chain there. It's actually getting each link is getting the entire texture map, normal map applied to the, the entire link. Definitely an error, but that's not a problem because in Unity, we're going to use a separate map with a alpha channel. But for now, really what we want to do is just orbit around and make sure that we're happy with the normal map. And we can see here it's quite clean, uh, no noticeable artifacts. That's um, worked pretty well. So that's basically a finished in-game asset with a nice clean normal map applied. And so next we'll move on to texturing this uh, asset in Quixel Dedu, primarily for our materials, and then we'll go into Photoshop for final texturing and bring it all into Unity.